one of the great things that, that will happen if we reduce hours of work is that we will have quite palpable reductions in our greenhouse gas emissions because it turns out that the countries who have higher working hours have higher greenhouse gas emissions. Countries who reduce their hours of work have lower greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and there are a couple of different reasons for that having to do with how households uh, spend their money but also the overall size of the economy. So we're not putting all that productivity growth into producing more stuff and using more carbon. Um, the plenitude economy gives, uh, the plenitude economy is an economy in which everyone can be employed, in which we can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So the core of the plenitude economy is the idea that we should take the productivity growth which is generated in the market economy, um, and that's one thing that our economy is still good at doing, increasing productivity growth, that is the amount um, of production that can come out of any hour of work and take that two, three, four percent productivity growth that we're getting every year, instead of using it to make the economy bigger, use it to give people more time off the job, so to reduce hours of work. Uh, since 1975 or so, the average American increased his or her hours of work by more than 200 hours a year. That's about an additional five hours of work per, uh, five weeks of work per year, people, uh, particularly before the, the uh, downturn in the economy in, 19, in 2008, were saying they were working many more hours than they wanted to, feeling stressed, a lot of work-family conflict. Um, and at the same time, we had a growing number of people who didn't have enough work. And that problem is just intensified now. Uh, maldistribution of hours of work. Some people have too much, other people don't have enough. One of the things that shortening work schedules can do is actually um, get us a better distribution of hours so everybody has a job. Those jobs might be uh, four day a week jobs, but if we put work time reduction at the core of our economic strategy, we can get a couple of things. We still get very high productivity growth because shorter hours turn out to be associated with higher productivity growth. People work faster, smarter, harder, more efficiently in shorter hours. Uh, we can put more people to work because we um, shorter hours tend to be associated with higher employment, lower unemployment. So instead of having to generate enough revenue for a five-day schedule, a firm can take on a new worker on a four-day schedule. That's, that's one example of how you do it. Um, greenhouse gas emissions fall dramatically with working hours. Countries which have high working hours emit a lot more greenhouse gas emissions. Countries who are reducing working hours have much lower emissions. So it's a, it's a central part of a strategy to solve climate change. Now, one of the things that people ask me about when I talk about these ideas is, number one, well, don't people want more money? And wouldn't they rather have more money than more time? And then uh, often I get the question, well, wouldn't people be bored with all that free time? And uh, I'll start with the latter, which is an interesting question. Back in the 1970s, when the uh, four-day work week was expected to, to be on the horizon. It's a kind of quaint little story about what experts were worried about in the 1960s and 70s, which was the crisis of too much leisure, particularly because what happened after that was working hours rose a lot in the United States. So we always get a chuckle out of thinking about that. But um, they were worried about a crisis of leisure time, that people wouldn't know what to do with their time. I think that is less true for current generations. Um, and one of the reasons is that we have a lot of technology that people have gotten very uh, creative with and that is taking an increasing amount of people's time. But the other really important thing about it also connects with the question of money. If we go forward in a way that leads to having increasing amounts of time but not increasing amounts of money. So let's say our cash income stays relatively constant and we get more free time. That's a path the Dutch took, for example, for almost 20 years, uh, the last two decades of the 20th century. Um, 
One of the things that people will start to do in their free time, that they, or that extra free time that they've gotten, is make and do things that can either substitute for having to buy stuff or make, and do, make things that they can then sell. We already see this among the unemployed, the underemployed. We see it in the sustainability movement. There's a flowering of what's called DIY, do-it-yourself, or self-provisioning. People are growing vegetables. They're making uh, bread. They're making jams. They're sewing. They're building houses. They're, they're um, growing um, mushrooms. They're keeping poultry. They are learning how to generate energy on their own, small-scale alternative energy. Uh, they're building permaculture gardens and vertical gardens and so on and so forth.